Hello and welcome to the JW Thoughts Studio. My name is Wally and when I hopped on my computer this afternoon, I saw on JW.org that under their new releases was a video part one talking about the annual meeting and I wanted to do something a little bit different and that was a live reaction uh, to it. So my idea was I was going to do just a live reaction and then I can have a shortened, shortened tid edited version later. So let's jump right into the video together and see what is in the 20, is it, wait, is it the 2021 or 2020? The 2021 <laughs> annual meeting. Uh, let's hit play and get going. Welcome. This is JW Broadcasting oh, Tony for Morris, January baby. 2021. So this is in the JW Broadcasting section. I didn't actually notice that. I just saw the annual meeting part one and I hit Dan download. On Saturday, but, uh, apparently October this is their 3rd, the Watchtower broadcast. Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania held its annual business meeting via video conferencing. In normal times, after we care for that necessary business, we share spiritual encouragement in a larger meeting. However, of the We're term not necessary living in business. normal times. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we had to readjust our We're going to have to edit that out for YouTube. However, <laughs> the good news is we did not cancel the spiritual portion of the program. You likely already enjoyed Brother Hurd's talk in October about the 2021 year I tax. Go double headphone for this. If not, we encourage you to do so. In addition, the governing body assigned me to be know, the team. chairman for the 2020 Should we annual jump backwards meeting. And actually watch that? I'll also be the anchor for this month's and next month's JW broadcasting programs. Ooh, We're happy I opened that a window, so you might actually hear some noise from the, the first the part just because it's a little bit stuff in here. Of the annual meeting. It begins with a special musical prelude. Please Ooh. enjoy. Oh, we will. Thank you, Tony. I don't understand this language at all. What is this? I hear snapping. And what language is this? Is it Korean? I guess it could be Korean. If they do anything about like witnesses being um, Im imprisoned for taking a neutral stance with regard to serving in the military, then it's definitely Korean. I guess we'll find out. Oh, cute. That's pretty wholesome. So I think that the Watchtower actually uses the same uh, video editing program that I do. Clearly they're much better than me. But just how they do some of their effects. It looks like 100% stylistic wise how I would do it. But anyway. Oh, oh, well, we have all the videos of the animals, I guess. Uh, here, let's uh, let one of the content cats in here. Hold on. Hi, Zizi. Big man. Finding Nemo! The jellyfish scene was the best. <laughs> it's kind of weird to have with someone like playing the little drum thing without the sound of it. And the same, they like brought in a violin and yet someone's playing a cello. 
Oh, here comes the violin. Okay. Zizi, you're- no, hey! Why don't my possessions? He likes possessions. Pistachios. I know being live, everyone will know like how poor my English is and my pronunciation is crap, but it's fine. Oh, uh, one other note while they're just like kind of singing in a fun language. Oh, that's actually a pretty cool masking technique. Anyway, um, one other thing is the current setup that I have, I can only record for 10 minutes uh, with the camera uh, that I'm using. So every 10 minutes there will be like a definitive cut. Um, and then we'll just try and restart like right away after that. And then there'll probably be some moving of cats. Ugh. Why don't you go sit on your bed, buddy? Jesus, how long is this? Oh, now we got the real paradise scenes. You got fruit and people smiling. That's what you want in your paradise scene. Oh, and a dog. Okay, now we're cooking. I'm gonna go with my original guess that this is in Korean. <laughs> For obvious reasons. Oh. Goodness gracious, we get another one. Oh, yeah. Squib. That's all the old watchtower buildings. Goodness. So I guess this is going to be some, like, history of the organization sort of deal. Map system, yeah. Doing languages. That's kind of cool. Oh, the electrical engineer is getting in there. Russian. That would make sense with my original theory that they did like the Korean and then they went to Russian. And it's like anyone that's being persecuted, they're doing it in those languages. But then it's kind of weird when you see like, oh look at all the progression and the growth in certain sectors of the witnesses, but sorry you live in this country. <laughs> Nothing. He released the Bible. Hell yeah. <laughs> Remember that? Very well. I think we're going to have to pause right here for the 10 minute break. Okay, let's just do it right here. Okay, this is the first one. Let's see how this goes. Pause the video. I actually haven't been to their new headquarters. My brother served at Bethel, so I went to uh, Warwick and Patterson and their Brooklyn headquarters three or four times when he was there. But I never went to Warwick. Wait, did I say Warwick? What was the old one called? The Farm? I don't even remember. Oh well. Okay, nine minutes of videos. 
Oh, jeez. <laughs> They're doing another one? Okay, this one's in English. Oh god, these dramas. I think I'm gonna make a tier list video about all of the different um, dramas that they have. I think that might be kind of fun. Just ranking them. <laughs> I think the Jonah one has to be pretty far down. Image provided by Shutterstock. Oh, hi ZZ. Please don't drink my coffee. It's really funny whenever you hear these songs again and you see the images. ZZ, don't drink my coffee. Whenever you see these images and everything, I get such like an emotional response to it. Like, it, it hits some sort of center in my in my heart that's just like I don't know. Okay, no, leave my pistachios alone. Zizi, you're in front of the screen. <laughs> oh, look at that manly chest hair, baby. <laughs> oh, and then the fake beard. What is with the fake beard? Why is it okay to do that? So they're really opening this with three different music videos. My guess is Korean, Russian, and English. But I guess we can verify that after the fact. Oh, this is when he just like wipes out a hundred thousand people. It's like whoosh. Wait for it. Yeah. <laughs> Kill them all. I've really grown to appreciate how they do some visual effects. It's not obviously just with the Watchtower, but like with all of movie productions that I've watched now, because I am, as all of you must know, a very novice uh, video editor and producer, whatever the hell you want to call it. But I have a, a lot higher of an appreciation for the quality that goes into that. Now I actually know how to do that. That's a masking transition. Those are pretty cool. Annual meetings of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania <laughs> have been held for many years. In fact, since January 1885. They have been held in different states in the US and What's that old movie? In Britain. It's like, uh, have you ever seen a grown man wear so much blue? 2020, the corporate meeting is being held by child. video conference. <laughs> the spiritual program I think we should just play a meme of that in like the, the recap of this. You may well do like a shortened video, this is a or I can just make it like more of my meeting. normal stuff. In but the past, <laughs> we have had some historic we'll put that annual meetings. Have you ever seen a grown man wear so much blue? At the annual meeting held on October 2nd, 1944 in Pittsburgh, the members of the Pennsylvania Corporation adopted six resolutions amending its charter. The charter had provided that voting shares be issued to contributors of funds to the society's work, but the Third Amendment eliminated that provision. Hmm. Thereafter, directors of the society were to be voted into office by individuals who were fully devoted to Jehovah, irrespective of the amount of money that they contributed to advance the kingdom work. That's kind of interesting. After the historic annual meeting in 1944, I wonder why he made the distinction of people that 
Since the governing body was then donate money and our with the Pennsylvania maybe I should pause it here. Seven uh, member board of directors. Let's pause it at fourteen oh seven. I wonder why they make the distinction between people that are voted into office based on their devotion to Jehovah versus people that are voted into office because they had I mean I assume that it's friends that were wealthy and donated more money I'm not I'm entirely unaware of you know that whole dynamic with Watchtower but it's kind of interesting how we made that distinction actors did this mean that the governing body could never be made up of more than seven anointed Christians well clearly not moreover since the directors are elected by the members of the corporation, were the corporation members electing members of the governing body at the annual meeting each year? Are the directors and officers of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania and the members of the governing body one and the same? Or are they different? These questions were answered years later. They were answered at the annual meeting held on October 1st, 1971. Another historic annual meeting. <laughs> the old historic. On that occasion, one of the speakers pointed out that the governing body preceded the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania by hundreds of years. No, it did not. Now, contrary to some who opposed Jehovah <laughs> and the earthly part of his organization and claim there was no governing body in the first century, and hence they see no need for a governing body today. A governing body was formed at Pentecost of 33 CE. Oh, he's going to use the Bible. We already before. know. We the already know he's going to whip out the old Bible to try to prove this. Existence. Let's go. Let's just go to Acts. At first, uh, the governing body consisted of 12 apostles. Acts His 1 or Acts 15. Let's go. Let's go. His We're already ready. An older man in Jerusalem. Boom. We're taking What's it going to be, Tony? Now notice what happened later <laughs> here in the Bible book of Acts <laughs> and chapter 15. So hey, the issues yeah, have been no. handled okay. by the 12 apostles, but oh, now with funny. this circumcision issue that came up amongst the congregations, notice what we read here in verse 2 of Acts 15, that after quite a bit of dissension and disputing, by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was arranged for Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others to go up to the apostles and elders in Jerusalem regarding this issue. So the issue was going to be settled by the first century governing body, and now it's uh, larger than the apostles. So what is called the elders these older men and, and the, the apostles, apostles, the governing body in Jerusalem? Now what? Yep. Is the benefit that of seems logical. following the direction from the governing body in the first century and by extension <laughs> That's today, all he has. Notice in Acts 16, <laughs> oh, verse 4 and 5, 16, they're carrying five. the decree there, and it mentions as they traveled on through the cities, they would deliver to them for observation, observance, excuse me, the decrees that had been decided on by the apostles and the elders who were in Jerusalem. Now notice... Then indeed, the congregations continued to be made firm in the faith and to increase in number day by day. So I'm not like a biblical expert by any stretch of the imagination, but it was my understanding that the governing body as far as the first century was concerned was completely uh, manufactured by the Watchtower organization. Again. I don't know if that's true, but just from what he's reading and giving it the old eyeball test, I don't quite see it. But anyway, uh, we'll keep going. Isn't that beautiful? There was a governing no. body. Uh, they didn't have uh, a need for legal Again, I'm not an expert, but I don't the think that there's in the first a century, precedent for saying they that they always obeyed the rules. A governing body. As long as conditions in this world permit, the governing body will make use of legal entities. If a legal entity is dissolved by government decree, the preaching work will still go on. Even now, 
in lands where restrictions are in effect and no legal entities are used, the kingdom message is being proclaimed, disciples are being made, and theocracy's increase continues. In the midst of this pandemic, <laughs> That's so the weird. preaching continues. They must have recorded. But no, Many experiences Tony, are happening globally. Now, one I Tony Morris would have known that there was an actual decline before saying that, right? Bethel, I think you'll appreciate so oh, he's saying a theocracy so continues. So maybe he's not necessarily saying, that oh, dozens um, of the numbers don't increase, the but theocracy States. continues. Many of them were COVID hotspots. They wanted to publish a video interview featuring two frontline health care workers in one of the hospitals. Well, it happened that the two nurses they chose for the interviews were our brothers. They well, were asked just to happened to be that way. Of the wow. family. One of the pictures had been taken before the pandemic in front of a paradise scene in one of Cheers. our assembly halls. Now, the woman coordinating the video interviews told the brother that she recognized that scene. So he asked her if she was a witness. She replied, no, but I studied with the witnesses and I know it's the truth. I can see how close we are to the end. The brother then told her that be happy to know that the second nurse whom she had interviewed the day before was also a witness. Then the woman burst into tears. She well, said it made sense that the two nurses selected for this interview would both be witnesses. I can see it in your approach and the belief in something bigger than this. And she said she planned to resume her Bible study. So we pray for this woman and all the wonderful experiences <laughs> happening as the preaching goes Wait, on so that's their best pandemic. story? Hold on, I gotta pause. So this it's is all 205. Because I'm gonna pause. So, their best story that they have to offer is oh, this person that used to study, they saw uh, that they these other two witnesses that were nurses were being interviewed and now i'm motivated that i might start studying again so like that's of all of the access that tony morris has to getting the very <laughs> excuse me the very best information the very best experiences that could come out of you know the witnessing field the best one that he has to bring to the table is someone that used to study saw some witnesses that were being interviewed and they're thinking about restarting their studies because they know it's the truth that's the best he's got it, it's actually quite indicative that their numbers are going down that that's the best experience that he can come up with anyway we can keep going all was witnesses plant and water, and God keeps making it grow. All glory goes to Jehovah. At this meeting, as pointed All out last glory year, goes to the Jehovah. announcement about the Ramapo project, oh, you goodness. will learn that the faithful slave is not slowing down. We have more work to do until Jehovah says the preaching work is finished. As we look to the future, we are confident that Jehovah will care for the spiritual and material needs of his people. He and his son, Jesus Christ, will continue to provide the heavenly direction and support needed to complete the kingdom preaching work. We therefore beg Jehovah but for we're not spirit inspired. to finish the work <laughs> he has given us. He's just guiding us uninspiredly. While Jehovah's organization here on earth is legally established, and abides by governmental requirements for its business meetings, this organization is bound by a higher power. Before he left the earth, Jesus told his followers, go make disciples, teaching them. But he did even more. Jesus promised that during the time of the end, we would also receive food at the proper time to help us fulfill that commission. Has Jesus kept his promise? Please watch the following video. It is entitled, Ooh, Go you get to watch a video, baby. Them. Everyone Ooh, 
fight. He seemed to be a Christian, and has dedicated himself to Jehovah God, must not only preach, but he must be able to those publications. We must go into the homes of the people and teach them what the Bible says. Go. We needed a book that could be used effectively in conducting Bible studies. One that would cover the basic doctrines and truths. Face the facts. Many years ago, in the Bethel dining room, after the noon meal, Brother Noor read off a list of 15 to 20 brothers' names who were to report at his office immediately. And they were told to write a new study book using simple, everyday language, just as they would present basic Bible truths to someone at the door. Well, within months, that book was written. Because you could only present and Bible truths in simple, like everyday truth. language. That book made even a new publisher feel oh, that's confident. actually. It was like million. having a bombshell in our hands, capable of blowing to bits all of the false doctrines. At one house, I conducted studies in that book for 15 years with different people. First, a woman. <laughs> Next, a family. Then some young people. Finally, another woman. Six people in all got baptized using that book. <laughs> Still, some struggled to finish this and the even more detailed hmm. Impossible to Lie book and to make progress. By the late 1960s, a book was needed that got right to the point. This is all before my time as a witness, so I... Bomb. And it was a game changer. <laughs> they called it the blue game bomb. Changer. It was written game changer. in a simple, clear, and a pointed way so that any sincere reader. Yeah, this is all could way understand. before my time, so I don't have much to I say about to it. I used to deal but drugs. That's the. <laughs> I wanted to change, but I didn't know how. Then, my manager gave me the truth book. I was immediately convinced I He used to deal drugs and, and his manager, his life. <laughs> drug <laughs> manager, Everyone gave him a book? For drugs got a truth book instead. Wait, hold on, okay. We're gonna, I don't understand that story. He said my manager gave me the book. So he, okay, so he had a regular job and then he dealt drugs on the side and his manager must have been a witness. Okay. And then... After that, all of the people that <laughs> came to get drugs, he gave a book. I, I honestly think that you would just die <laughs> if you did that. Oh goodness. Okay. Well, whatever. I don't know. By the early 1980s, the field needed something new. Could a book be produced at the same level as the Bible stories book, but with the information presented <laughs> in the truth book? The same level as the Bible story book, showing I the massive killing of people. Oh. But now tent pegs and being thrown off and of buildings. One ready to start. Thank you. I was studying with a man who had been smoking for 17 years. Then he started to read the Live Forever book. So they're just that going through it. all the problems. So we got Any drugs and smoking so far. What else are we going to get? On the shelf. <laughs> Only a decade later, the world had changed. In some lands, so many wanted to study that they were put on a waiting list. Other lands faced a different problem. Oh, Atavala, Ecuador. I've actually Billy been Dally there. It's <laughs> funny. It takes us years to bring some into the truth, and we wonder why. Maybe this book, with its pointed truths, will open their minds and their hearts to see. The Live Forever book helped me to love Jehovah, but the Knowledge book helped me to make the decision to serve him. My husband studied the knowledge book while he was working in Poland. He loved it so much that he translated it into Mongolian and sent it wow. to Wow. He Soon translated we the knowledge book baptized. into Mongolian. My husband then joined the real Mongolian translation team. Wow, that guy put in some effort. That's Still, insane. We needed a book that not only sped up disciple making, but also touched the heart. Hey, David Spoon. This book has an instant appeal that quickly draws households. <laughs> I'll, I'll pause it. 2610. So <laughs> it's funny when they show that picture of David Spoon, his arm was like resting on the podium. P 
people used to get on me when I gave my talks for uh, resting my arm on the podium, and I never really saw any precedent in any of our literature, but still elders would come up and be like, well, Wally, you, you really can't be resting your arm on the podium like that. And then uh, David Splane came to give a talk. Was it in our congregation? I believe it was in our congregation. Maybe it was at one of our assemblies anyway. But when he came to give the talk, there he was resting his arm on the podium because it seems like that, uh, judging by that picture and my personal experience, uh, that's what he does. Uh, so it's kind of funny that um, the elders in the congregation were like, well, you shouldn't do this. And then David Splane was doing it. And then I never really got any, uh, any flack from from resting my arm on the podium. Some are calling it the gold nugget. I was searching for now this something is my to time. fill the emptiness that we both felt in our lives. Oh. I was being trained by one of Jehovah's Witnesses and she said, feel free to read whatever I have in my toolbox. I opened it and <laughs> immediately, little yellow book, what does the Bible read? An instruction to on how to like the use a hammer? In the beginning of the book, they touched my heart immediately and I felt like these answer all the questions I've been searching for. <laughs> That's really weird. Life. You're working with someone. Hey, feel free to read whatever I have in my toolbox. <laughs> publication entitled What uh, Can the Bible I do Teach Us? This. this is right before I left. Massive it transition. It was like having a bombshell in our hands. It really touched the heart, and it helped bring many into the truth. This is actually some I pretty cool editing. I do appreciate a lot of, like, the These watchtowers <laughs> editing skills and everything just now that... Because I'm so novice, I've been doing it for just, like, a month or two. Um, just when I see, like, some of the things that they do, I'm like, wow, that's actually pretty impressive. And that there never could be another. I'm easily impressed. Many of you have used every one of those publications over the years. Like me, you have felt that each one was a great instrument for its time. But we're not stuck in the past. We look to the future. What is the future of disciple making? Listen as Brother David Splain delivers the talk. Wouldn't it be great? David's the year plane. text for 2020 was about the preaching work. Oh, I think I actually have to pause real quick. Hold on. Uh, my headphones just said that the battery's low. We gotta switch out. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Um, I don't see my other ones in here. I have some hardware ones. Hold on. Right back, right back, right back. Oh, hi, Zizi. You want to come in? Zizi, you want to come in? Hey, buddy. Okay. They were attached to the old workout bike. Boom. Okay, uh, we'll jump right back in. Baptizing them. Now, in harmony with that theme, the governing body directed that a number of study articles should be prepared for the study edition of the Watchtower on the ministry, and particularly about conducting Bible studies. Then, at the regional convention this summer, why, almost the entire day of Saturday was dedicated to the disciple making work. Why? We don't just want to report Bible studies. We want to make disciples. That's what Jesus told us to do. Go make disciples, baptizing them. Now, when it comes to reporting Bible studies, we're doing very well. Worldwide, we're reporting about 10 million Bible studies. And when you think of it, uh, what, what is going to be on about? Like, oh yeah, we're doing money. more Bible studies, so but with the numbers gone down, million people I wonder if it actually was... Yeah, I mean, surely this now, was recorded what about well in advance before that report, right? Yeah. Well, every year, hey, buddy. Between 200 and 
300,000 hey, people are baptized. So you can see that the make disciples part is lagging behind the reporting Bible studies part. Now, this trend has been a concern of the governing bodies for a number of years. And we wondered, why is it that so many people are not taking a stand for the truth? You can probably think of a number of reasons yourself. Some people, for example, are quite happy to learn... <laughs> Maybe because it's teaches, not true. <laughs> but they're not willing to act on what the Bible teaches. They're not willing to make drastic changes in their life. Some may have studied through a whole book, or maybe two, but they haven't been to a single We're going to have meeting. to pause right there. because Maybe one. Maybe the memorial once. Well, they make us think of something that Jehovah told the Israelites back in the days of Ezekiel. Yeah, we're I'd gonna like you to turn the Bible. to Ezekiel chapter 33. And we're going to we're read not, verse 34. Now this was a description of the Israelites in Ezekiel's day. And I think you'll find that the description fits pretty well a few yeah. of our Bible studies. I'm already there, Ezekiel David. 33. I'll give you a moment. 32. Okay. okay. Maybe we can read we're it with going to read verse 32. Bam. Look. You are to them like a romantic love song, sung with a beautiful voice and skillfully played on a stringed instrument. But then notice this. They will hear your words, but no one will act on them. Doesn't that describe some of our Bible students? Or maybe the study isn't regular. Maybe it isn't consistent. Maybe the student often cancels, or maybe the publisher. I'm going to pause it right cancels. there at 3130. So it's kind of interesting to me that he's going on about, you know, maybe this and maybe that with the, the studies being irregular or they're not progressing. And it's kind of funny because the Watchtower and the governing body have this sort of fundamental flaw with them where they can't look inward and see you know the real issues that might be at stake here and they think oh well if we uh introduce i mean we're assuming there's going to be a new book right because they showed all the old ones and the whole wouldn't it be nice blah blah, blah. um when they are talking about you know why people aren't progressing you, you kind of get this idea of delusion. Like, well, maybe people aren't progressing because what you're saying doesn't make any sense. So to them, it must make perfect sense. And I know some people might think that, you know, they are malicious and that they do have evil intentions or they just love the power. Uh, I don't personally fall on that side of, I don't even know if it is an argument, let's just call it the discussion. I tend to think these people have genuinely inherited a set of beliefs and that they're just going along with it to the very best of their ability. And that's about it. But anyway, just by his language there, I just feel it kind of confirms that. Anyway, let's keep going. Well, if a study isn't regular, it's pretty hard for the person to make progress, isn't it? And in many cases, Kind-hearted publishers just can't bring themselves to study. I remember, study. like, the pioneer no meetings and stuff. They were talking about unprogressive or Bible they studies. Say, if I they were droning study, on about that. I won't have a study. I like <laughs> Yeah, Bible, Bible studies Bible are study. awesome. It's like free time. Well, we're talking about <laughs> okay, buddy. progressive Bible Hi. studies. And that's a challenge. It's not easy yeah, just to conduct left. a progressive Bible study. There are so many factors to consider. For example... How early do I bring in prayer? How do I direct interest to the organization? How early should I mention the meetings? And uh, what do I do if my Bible student Jesus. doesn't show up at the meeting? Opposition by cats. Opposition. That can be tricky. Bring it up too soon, and uh, you might scare them off. Wait too long, and it may be too late. And uh, what about the ministry? How do I encourage hey, my Bible student to share what he is learning with others? These are a lot of challenges. And don't even mention 
uh, helping my Bible student to break a bad habit like smoking. Wouldn't it be great if we <laughs> yeah, could see how you're going, some David. of these things? Here's more food for thought. How do I make sure that the material is really touching the student's heart? I want that student to, to love Jehovah, to get to know Jehovah. I want him to have a warm personal relationship with Jehovah so that no one, neither the boss, nor his relatives, nor his mate, nor his neighbor, will be allowed to come between my student so I'll pause and there. Jehovah God. That's pretty interesting that he says, I don't want this person's you know workmates their friends or i don't know exactly but even their marriage mate to come between him and knowing jehovah it's almost like how can we set our bible students up to start the shunning process like okay you're gonna have to abandon everyone that you know for this cult and well let's check this and by doing so, you're going to certainly isolate yourself from all of those people that you formerly knew. And, you know, we need to start them off early. And then the other thing he mentioned earlier, excuse me. <coughs> oh. Excuse me. Uh, the other thing it mentioned, or he mentioned earlier, was how to direct. <coughs> oh, there goes my headphones. Sorry, the other thing you mentioned was how do we direct attention to the organization uh, early on, and like when do we do that? So, anyway, that was kind of caught my attention as well. Anyway, let's keep going. Here's another thing we're conducting a Bible study, and we want to focus on the scriptures. Now, Jesus said, The seed is the word of God. So, now, how do I draw my student out as to his feelings about this scripture? Maybe he understands what the scripture says. But how does he feel about what he is learning? Wouldn't it be great if some of those questions were prepared for us? <laughs> Bible students also have challenges in their personal life. David's playing is like it be great a if master of like that. Study Wouldn't it be great if situation why? To the <laughs> he just does it so well. understands what the student is going through? That would really take the pressure off, wouldn't it? <laughs> and how can you evaluate the progress of the student? How do I know if the student is steadily working toward becoming an unbaptized publisher and then getting baptized? Here's another thing. One of the reasons why it takes so long for some to make progress is that there are two books and a brochure to go through. Oh, That's a lot of reading. Oh my goodness. Think of it. It's wild. Of our students have never opened a book since they left school. Oh, brother. So for them, this is a big change. Some get baptized before they've uh, covered the second book. And that's a pity, because they're losing out on practical information on Christian living that they really need to have. And then some of our brothers and sisters are not even using the Jehovah's Will brochure to direct interest to the organization. Oh, no. The Jehovah's Will brochure. Can you imagine? Oh, people don't even know what it is. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great? If in just one book, <laughs> We could cover all the basic doctrinal matters, all of the matters about Christian living, and direct people's interest in the or to the organization in just one book. That truly would be great. <coughs> well, maybe right now you're saying, all right, I, I understand. We do need some help with this. No, we're not. Nobody's. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Okay. Nobody's saying that at this moment. Everyone's saying, okay, we understand what you're getting at. Can you stop treating us like children and just tell us what the new book is going to be about? Okay. In April 2018, the <clears throat> committee of the governing body surveyed the branches to find out what teaching methods were really effective in bringing people along to baptism. We have to admit that uh, some of the study material and teaching methods that we used 30 years ago, they were great for the time, but they don't necessarily meet the needs of people today. Well, they got some good answers in, and based on the answers, early in 2019, a team of brothers, there were writers, there were designers and consultants, they got... That's, so that's actually pretty interesting, uh, that 
he brings it up like, oh, okay, well, we had to do like this sort of family feud style um, survey of like what's working in the field. Because in my mind, if Jehovah is directing the organization and he's using the governing body to make those decisions, they really shouldn't have to do like a testing protocol like a, a, a focus group or whatever. I, I, I don't know if like that's what they did, but by sending out, oh, okay, well, we're going to ask, you know, what are some of the challenges that we're meeting in the field or, or what are some of the things that, you know, we have to deal with? In my mind, I think, oh, okay, well, you wouldn't really be having to ask those questions if you have this divine direction where you can just, you know, you know sit there and pray to Jehovah. Oh, okay, well, you obviously know the, the pressures and the challenges we're meeting. You know, please guide us in the right direction. And then you wake up the next morning like, okay, we need a new book uh, to help us with our ministry. Whereas if you were doing a man-made organization, you would do exactly what I think he's suggesting here is, well, let's, you know, ask some questions, get some data, and then run some tests, and then make our decision after that. I guess we'll see where he goes with that. But my brain Im immediately just goes to the man-made way that the organization is presenting itself here by not just saying, well, we prayed about it, and this is what we decided to do. But I guess we'll see what David Spine says here. Maybe this will all be inaccurate. Together to investigate whether we could improve <clears throat> on the tools that we're using. And they came up with a new method for conducting studies. Now let's stop here and be very clear. We deeply appreciate all of the study material that we've had over the years. <clears throat> it's always been great for the times. Now maybe like me, you cut your teeth on uh, let God be true. This means everlasting life. The truth shall make you free. Those books were just perfect for the period just after World War II. And then we know that the Live Forever book was a real favorite with many. Now, it wasn't the study forever book. It was the Live Forever book. But some took a Ooh, long, long he's time got jukes. to complete their study <laughs> <Jukes>. of that book. <laughs> And of course, we oh, all just appreciated got to playing, uh, the, the Smash Teach Brothers. Us book. He's got jokes. God's <laughs> love. All of this He's material has been very, very That's good. Funny. But times change, and people's needs change as well. We're living in a visual society, and people learn less by reading than by observing, by watching, and by discussion. So, what are we saying? Are you ready? Yes! Today, the governing oh. body is happy to announce that a brand new publication for conducting Bible studies Woo. will soon be made available in printed form and in electronic form. Hell yeah, let's Would you like yeah. to know the let's title? Go. It's a good one. I would. Enjoy <laughs> Life Forever, I'm gonna have an fun. interactive Bible course. I'm going to have fun making memes of that. <laughs> It's a good title. Would you like to know? The title is taken from <laughs> Psalm 22, 26. Uh, that's funny. Those seeking Jehovah will praise him. You, may you enjoy life forever. Isn't that nice? Isn't that a nice text? <laughs> Isn't that nice? And how was the course put together? <laughs> well, the branches uh, sent in all of their comments, and they were good comments. And then the writers got busy and they analyzed like the comments that were uh, sent in by the branches and on the basis of those comments three sample lessons were prepared now the lessons look good on paper but would they work okay, in the hold field? let's pause right there so again that's what i was talking about earlier so they sent out like a questionnaire you know what are these and then they did like a trial run of it Again, that's just indicative of a man-made organization, not something that's been or being run by God. Hi, Zizi. To find out, those lessons were sent to 97 different countries for field testing, and the results were very encouraging. So, all 60 lessons in the book were sent to the field for testing. 
Now the question may come up, who are the testers? Did you get all the circuit overseers, the missionaries, the <laughs> special pioneers together? I don't think that's the question. I think, why couldn't you just pray material? about this and God lead you into well, it? Well, there were some of those. Why would you have but, to uh, test? We're not all circuit overseers. We're not all missionaries or special pioneers. It doesn't work with the narrative So uh, for me. a wide variety anyway. of brothers and sisters were used in this test. Some are quite new in the truth, and others had been in the truth for quite some time. The result is the publication that will soon be made available. Now, what's different about this course? I'm not going to go into much detail because Brother Jackson is going to handle Ooh, that. Yeah. But here are a couple of points. First of all, very important. All of the question, all of the information that's required to answer the 60 questions for baptismal candidates is covered thoroughly in this book. <laughs> all of the information needed, that's Bible topics, Christian living topics, directing interest to the organization, it's all thoroughly covered in just one book. Okay, so that's pretty funny that he's like, in order to get baptized, there's 60 questions that you must answer. And now we have a book that will cover thoroughly all 60 questions. So what were people doing before? They were just like flying blind into this test that they were going through? That really doesn't make any sense to me because if you're gonna have a test, you know, you, generally speaking, you have like preparation for it. You can't test someone on something that they don't know. So like, why is it some big revelation? Oh, so finally we're gonna have a book that covers all 60 questions that are going to be asked in the baptism questions. Anyway, that was just funny to me. You do not, repeat, you do not have to study a second book. Thank you for repeating What's the, the phrase, do not. Well, it's somewhat similar to sure the what you said midweek there. workbook. And you'll see that uh, it's organized in a way that there can be a free mm -hmm. discussion between the student and the conductor. In fact, in each lesson, there's just a, there are just a few introductory paragraphs that the student is invited to read ahead of time. I'm going to pause 